Hello YouTube, welcome back. I just got a brand new computer. It runs much faster. It's not as annoying. And so I'm coming back from the, the two week break that I took because my computer was out of order. But here's a new one. It has an i5 processor. It's got 6 gigabytes of RAM. It's got about like 2.64, 2.67 gigahertz of processing speed. But anyway, that's not why we're here. So I wanted to show you something else about the about the while loop here. Now we already know that uh, the um, about infinite loops here. Notice how my computer can compile this ten times faster than it did the last several videos. Anyway, uh, we already know about the infinite loops here. In this particular loop here. The first we make a variable called count. Then we enter the while loop. So first count is equal to zero. And then we say then we'll add a value to count. Then we'll check to see if it's true again. Well it's always going to be true, so we're going to keep on counting over and over. So the computer's already up to a hundred and sixteen center and seventeen thousand here. So I'm gonna have to kill this the hard way here just by pressing the X. But now we already know that we can break out of this loop if we put a condition in here. Say like a, if count is less than ten or something. All right, so we can we can already know we already know this here, and it'll just do the same thing. It'll just break. It'll run through zero through nine here. But to show you another way here, see that it goes through the zero through nine here. Because when we get to nine here, we'll output nine to the screen. Then we'll say count plus plus. Then now count is equal to 10 right now. Then we'll check again. 10 is not equal to 10. It's false. So it'll it'll skip this whole entire block of code now. Then it doesn't print 10 to the screen because it's already at system pause here because it are, it didn't. 10 is not less than or equal to 10. Okay. But just to not sound too repetitive here, we're gonna do something different right now. So let's say we do the same thing here, but let's make an if statement here. If count, let's say if count is equal to 10, we will do something and we will learn a new command called break. Now notice that break is a light, light it lights up in blue when you type it, so that means it's a C++ keyword. Now I'm assuming that you didn't mess with all the tools with a lot of the stuff that's in the tools to change all the colors. but uh, So I'm making a very big deal out of keywords here and I'll, I'll discuss those in a later tutorial. So remember keep in mind that everything that lights up in blue is going to be considered a C++ keyword here. And it's going to be helpful to know that later on in your programming career here. So now we know a new way to break out of loops here. So even though that this was true here we already learned before that if we put a while loop just equal to, or if you put the boolean while loop equal to true, it'll always, it'll never break out. Well, here's a case where you can break out of any kind of loop here. So regardless of this condition here, you can break out of this, and it'll, it'll just break out of the loop here, and it'll just go to the next line of code outside of this loop here. Okay, <clears throat> so that's just a, an intro to the break statement here. Now uh, I'm going to delete a bunch of stuff here because I have already written some code here that I want to show you. And to an, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this here and paste it right here. That way you don't have to watch me type. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller here. Yeah, uh, my computer screen is a little smaller than the last one, but that's all right. Hopefully you can still see it. Okay, so <clears throat> let's let's see what happens here when we run this. Now first I want to tell you what a prime number is. A prime number, um, hold on, let me see how I can say it. All right, if prime number is a number which will not give you a remainder or a decimal when you divide by, when you divide it by one or itself. So uh, if, if, let's say we look at number 13 here. If you divide 13 by one, you won't get a remainder. If you divide 13 by 13, you won't get a remainder. If you divide uh, 13 by any other number except those two numbers here, you'll either get a decimal value 
or you'll get a remainder. Does that make sense? I mean, you'll get, or you'll get them both, but depending on how you look at it, uh, you know, um, one and thirteen will only go into thirteen evenly. So, for instance, eight is not a prime number because it's divisible by two. But prime numbers are numbers that uh, you won't be able to find a nice whole number, an integer value that'll go into it evenly here. So, seven's a prime number. Two is a prime number. Three is a five. Seven, nine. 11, 13, 17, 23, is a, those are prime numbers here. And the list can kind of go on here. So let's say I enter, now let's go back and look through this code here. So let's say I enter uh, 5 here. So it says 5 is prime. <clears throat> okay, well, let's see what happens here. So first I made, notice I made two variables here. I made an A and an N, and I set N equal to 2 here. Okay, so first, now the first thing that happens, it says, uh, enter a number for A. Then I get here, then it was waiting for me to enter a value for A, so I decided to enter 5. Okay. Now let's see. So we know that N is equal to 2, right? Because it's declared up here. So N is equal to 2 and A is equal to 5. So is 2 less than or equal to 5? that will be considered true so we enter this loop now we now right here <clears throat> now that we're in this loop here we look at the first statement here in this case we're looking at an if statement so does 2 equal 5 it does not so because this is false here this is considered false we skip this entire block of code because it's false if it was true we would read inside of it now we check now remember the mod operator is 2 mod 5 equal to 0 here. Or no, I'm sorry, is 5 mod 2 equal to 0 here. So what's the remainder here? The remainder is 1. When you take 5 divided by 2, you get a remainder of 1. Well, that's also false. So both of these here are false this first time around here. So then we'll increment it by 1. So right here, remember, and remember that, watch the increment and decrement video if you don't, if this is a little confusing right now. But basically now n is now going to equal 1. So 2 is, so n is now going to equal 2 plus 1, which is 3. So now right here, we get to the end of the while loop. Notice it, can, it lights up in gray a little bit. So when we get to the end of the uh, this while loop here, which is this block of code here, we have to go back up to the while loop again. Then we see is 3 less than or equal to 5. It's still true. So because it's still true, we're going to go through here again, the same phase. This is false. 3 does not equal 5, so we skip this block of code. Then we go to the next if statement, which will be the next program statement. In this case, it happens to be the if statement. Does 3 mod 5 equal 0? So when you divide, or it is, is 5 mod 3. I keep on saying that backwards. Is 5 mod 3 equal to 0? Well, 5 divided by 3 is 1 with a remainder of 2. We don't care that it's 1. We're only looking at the remainder here. So the remainder is 2, so 2 does not equal 0. This is a false statement. So we skip it again. We go to 4. They're, they're both false again to save us the time. So finally we get to 5 here. <clears throat> so is this, this is the only statement that's true here. Okay, so because it's true, if 5 equals 5, we're going to execute this here. So first we're going to print 5, because remember we print out the, the value here, which is 5. Then we print a space. Then it prints out this text here. It's prime with an exclamation mark here. Now notice here, this is new here. This is called an, um, an escape sequence. We'll go over those later on. As promised, right now it's not important, but just to introduce you here. Now we, we, could, we could have used end line here, but uh, if you use a backslash and an end, it'll automatically end the line. It's a shortcut. It's called an escape sequence, and we'll go over those two. There's other ones that we can use as a backspace, which is basically black slash B. There's ones that make sounds. We'll go over those later, but <clears throat> just introduce here, this is an escape sequence, so be careful using that black slash key if you want to enter it into the character as a backslash, and we'll go over that when we go over the character variables. There's a lot to the character variables here. But anyway, backslash in, 
ends the line here. So that's something in C++. That's a little... That's, that's new here for right now. Okay. So basically, what this code does will tell you if a number is prime or not. Now my math teacher told me <coughs> that uh, some of the most unbeatable bank systems, bank security, is involves very, very large prime numbers. I don't know anything about it, but I wouldn't know where to begin with that right offhand. All right, so right, I entered four here. It says four is divisible by two. Okay. Let's say we enter a nine here. Nine is divisible by three. <clears throat> All right, so first let's say, let's say we do the same thing again, then we'll wrap this up. I want to show you one more thing after we wrap this up here. We enter nine for A. Okay, so first is nine, there's a two equal nine, because remember N is equal to two at first, because we initialized it. We initialized it to two. All right, so let's take this. Uh, so doesn't, so this is false here. Two does not equal nine. Does a nine divided by two give you a remainder of zero? It doesn't, it's false. So they're both false, we increment this by one. Next, this is still false again, same reason. Now, does 9 divided by 3 give you a remainder of 0? It does. 9 divided by 3. 3 goes in the 9 perfectly. So the remainder is 0. So this is a true statement. Keep in mind that n equals 3 here. So we're going to output 9, which is a. Then it says, it prints out this text, is divisible by. Then it prints out the n character. In this case, it happens to be 3 at this moment. 9 is divisible by 3. Then we end the line. Then we break out of this loop. Then we're back at the end. Once we break out of this loop here, we go to the next program statement outside this loop, which happens to be system pause. And then we're the user, we're, this is where we're at currently here. The user, which is me in this case, is waiting for me to press any key. And we terminate it. So now I just want to show you one more thing here. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here, um, um, let's say I make another while loop here. Uh, let's say we make an X here. Let's say we input an X. Let's say we make this X. Let's say we make this equal to 2, just because 1 by definition is a prime number here. But uh, Let's say we put this whole thing here, this whole loop that we just went through inside a different loop. Okay, so here, I'll, let me uh, make it less confusing. Let's say, uh, let's say while, um, here I'll explain it, I'll explain the code. While a is less than x here, then we'll say uh, a plus plus and uh, n is equal to 2. Now notice, see this a plus plus is the same thing as n equals n plus 1. Well, except as a different variable. We, I could have used a plus n plus plus over here, which is the same exact thing as n equal n plus 1. It just increments it by 1. Now let me make this smaller so we can see this again. We need to see the whole thing. Okay, so it's a little smaller. I apologize for that. We'll have to use the maximize button to see all this. <coughs> Okay. So let's enter a number for x here. Now let's just watch what happens here. We already know what the uh, prime number loop does here. Okay. So I added, I kind of add a little bit more to the code here. So let's say I enter 100 for x. And it'll enter the first 100 prime numbers. Now it's, notice that it starts at 2 here. Now 1 by definition isn't prime. Uh, you'll have to look up why because I don't know right offhand. But 1 by definition is not prime. And it goes through 1 through 99 here. Now let's say I make this equal here. Less than or equal to, so we can print off 100 here. <clears throat> so let's say we enter uh, 2000. And then it'll print off the first 2000 numbers and it'll tell you if it's prime or not here. So 2000 is divisible by 2. 1999 is prime. And you can kind of look back here to a certain point. 
like 1961 is divisible by 37 here. So this is just basically a simple code. It's not the most efficient, but it's just something simple to get us started with. You know, we'll, we'll go over um, more code later. How to make it more efficient once we get a little better handle on this. But this is just a simple code, and the computer is so fast that we can output it. So this is just a set of instructions for the computer, and it'll execute them very quickly. And uh, you know, this is just this is a taste of what you can, what we're going to be doing when we start making uh, you know games, because the while loop is going to be the most important loop when you make games. I might have said that already. But when we start making our characters move across the screen, up, down, left, right, or in a different directions, we'll, I mean, we, might, we won't be using prime numbers. Well, I won't be. Maybe you want to use prime numbers for a game for some reason. But that's basically it here. <coughs> and this is the, this wraps up the while loop, and, um, <coughs> I will, uh, See you on the next tutorial.